I just call upon our first speaker, Mr. Patrick Majinder. Dear Mr. Patrick Majinder, he is going to present about the brand innovations and social media transformations. So, in the era of Facebook and YouTube, brand innovations has become a challenge when it comes to the reachability of social media and audience. To acknowledge us more, we have Mr. Patrick Mazumdar, Managing Partner at Happy Marketer to help us out in brand innovation and social media transformations. For more than 10 years, Mr. Patrick has led a successful digital consulting firm, trained and advised more than 500 enterprises in the Asia-Pacific region on all things. Social diverging social strategies for brands, marketing, sales and customer services function. His genuineness, passion for transformative social media has made him one of the LinkedIn top 100 connectors in the Asia-Pacific region and that what keeps his lock score at 70 and his social skill selling index at 90. He has advanced regional brands including Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, SMRT, Bloomberg, Bloomberg Pontiera, Starbucks, Capilan, Royal Brewery Airlines, Tiger Air, Nine Business School and Standard Chartered Blank on um, social strategies to drive business transformations. He has also been appointed to a key member to the Global Digital Board at Time International. He has advised government policies, agencies in Singapore and in Asia on laboring digital to chart out, including public policies and scale up political campaigns. Patrick is a regular commentator on digital marketing in regional blogs and publications such as Marketing Magazine. Moonbrilla, Campaign Asia and the Singapore Business Review. He has spoken at regional conferences such as Melanin 2020, IRX, In Cosmetics, Actic and iMedia and was awarded the N Entrepreneur Award at Global Youth Marketing Forum in 2016. When not advertising clients, he had can be found either enjoying a game of cricket or chatting about sports, politics or public policy on Twitter. Mr. Patrick Mazunder, our digital marketers are awaiting for your ideas. Uh, good evening to everyone in Asia and good morning to everyone who's probably on the other side uh, in, in North America or uh, perhaps Europe as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take you through, uh, you know, this concept of driving digital transformation through command centers. Uh, so I think the moderator spoke about brand innovation. I think uh, what I really want to focus on in the next half an hour or so is how do you have a command center which can kind of help you uh, build a foundation for that brand innovation. So as uh, introduced, I'm Pramthit from Happy Marketer. I've been running a digital consulting firm in APAC for the last uh, 10 years. So what I present today is, is based on my experience uh, uh, with working with a lot of clients in this part of the world. And uh, please feel free to ask questions in the comments box. I can, uh, I can answer those during the presentation or probably uh, later as well. So, you know, when I first talk about the word digital command center, what really comes to mind? Right? A lot of people talk, think of command centers as these physical war rooms. So if you look at the, uh, you know, the urban definition of command centers, uh, typically command centers uh, actually started during the wars, when it would be a central room for people to kind of come together, exchange information, which would help them make decisions quicker, faster, better. So once that image loads, you will see what a modern command center looks like. That's a typical digital command center, uh, you know, seen, seen from a large multinational corporate where you will see lots of TV screens, lots of graphs, lots of people discussing. This is literally a modern digital command center where you have different views, different charts, which kind of give you an insight into a business, give you a, gives you a pulse of the business, and helps you make, uh, you know, drive 
better inside than make better decisions. Right? That's what a digital command center is all about. And I'm not sure how many of you have come across this, but in larger corporations like, uh, and I'll give you some examples. So most of airlines, banks, telecom operators, this is very, very crucial today because in the world that we live in, it thanks to data that we can, uh, that we have access to, uh, that we can make better decisions. Uh, so essentially a command center is any place that is used to provide centralized command for some purpose, for some business purpose in this case. And uh, most people tend to think of command centers in the context of some sort of a crisis that, you know, maybe a flight is delayed, maybe a flight, there's a flight crash or some weather issue and, you know, that's when command centers are useful. Now, uh, while that's the case, uh, there are actually a lot of other use cases. And let's kind of take a look at what some of those use cases are. So, <clears throat> I'm waiting for the slide to load. So, a digital command center, you know, what I'm going to share with you is the architecture of what a digital command center looks like. So, to the end user, you will see all those nice looking screens which are called the digital visual dashboards. So, that's what, uh, you know, that's what a customer sees. But beneath that, there are a lot of features, technical features that, that are built into it. You have what's called 365 by 24 7 mobile and email alerts. Because a command center at the end of the day is supposed to provide you with insights and information. So, you know, there are alerts that can be built that every time a particular activity happens, people in the organization get some sort of an alert via mobile notifications or emails. But what are the use cases that brands or businesses uh, who can use the command center for, right? So let's take a look at 10 use cases that uh, we have kind of implemented and worked with clients on. The first one is competitive insights. So a command center can help you understand what your competitors are doing, what are people saying about your competitors. Uh, so that can be very, very useful because any insights about your competition can be very powerful. Next, you're looking at consumer insights. What are your consumers, your customers, what are they saying about your business, your industry, your brands? Are they happy? Are they unhappy? So that's another set of insights that you can get. So broadly, there are two insights that you can derive. One is about competition, the other is about your customer. Next, you're looking at getting data about revenue and sales metrics, meaning you can use a command center to keep track of your business's revenue and any other sales metrics that matter, whether it's online sales, offline sales. I'll give you some examples uh, in a few moments. You can also take a look at data about marketing channel analytics. So if you're using different marketing channels, a command center can give you information about which channels are working, which channels are working better, how much money is being spent on, spent on a particular channel, so on and so forth. So you have a good grasp of how much, uh, you know, how much or how good is your marketing system. Next, you can take a look at what we call real-time customer service management, meaning command centers can tell you at this juncture what are people saying about your brand on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. And you can also analyze and respond because in customer service is not just about listening, it's also about being able to analyze how bad the situation is, who are my good influencers who are really upset with my brand and also respond to them in a timely manner. Next, we're also looking at digital crisis management. When a major crisis hits your business uh, because of internal or external factors, the command center can again give you alerts and also help you manage that. Next up, we are looking at reputation management. So reputation management is not just about your company or organization's brand, but also about the reputation of different people in the organization, especially the senior leadership. What are people saying about those people? Because in today's world, the individual reputation has a huge impact on the corporate reputation. So it's important to have a good pulse of all that. Then you also need to look at brand monitoring and benchmarking. So uh, the data sets can give you a lot of information about how good is your brand as far as customers or the stakeholders are concerned. Uh, what's the brand value like? Uh, what are the different aspects of your brand is working or not working? And next, we're looking at employee engagement. So command centers is not just about your external stakeholders, but also very importantly about your own employees. Are your employees happy? What are they saying about you on social media? Uh, what are their requests or demands? And likewise, you can also use it to manage media as well as your influencers. 
So as you notice, the command center is a holistic business tool which has a lot of use cases. Of course, one doesn't have to use all use cases at once, but you have the potential of using those for different business purposes at different times. And as you notice by the color coordination, the use cases are for different business functions. So the orange ones is for your research and insights team. Your blue one is for your sales and marketing. Your orange, light orangish yellow is for customer service. Your pink one is for your brand and corporate communications team. And your green one is for your HR and you know, media management team. Right? So that's the broad framework of a digital command center. Let's take a look at some more details and use cases. So the three core pillars of any digital command center, it all starts with the data. Are we collecting the right data? That's the most important. First step in a command center. Next, we're looking at insights. Does the tool help us uncover key insights? Because data alone is not useful. We need to be able to read that data and convert those into meaningful insights. And those insights should be actionable. And hence, the third step is actions. Based on those insights, what actions can be taken? So this is very critical as far as the digital command center is concerned. We talk about data, what data sources do we need to listen to? Usually most systems are, there's a lot of chatter in the world about social listening, which essentially talk about listening to social media data. Now that's only one good source. There are five other sources that I want to take you through. Number one, like I said, apart from social media, what matters is online search. What are people searching about your business, your people, your brand on Google, Yahoo, Bing, Baidu, etc. Search is a very, very powerful data source because what people search about tells you a lot about their mindset and their uh, intent. Next up, we're looking at social media, which is a given. What are people saying about your business and brands on different social media channels? Then, we're also looking at digital asset interaction. What that really means is what are people doing on your digital assets, your websites, your mobile apps, your microsites? Are they engaging with you? What content are they reading? How much time are they spending? Are they buying from your platforms? So essentially, data from your own digital assets. So, we're looking at silent consumption. Let me come back to that in a bit. Two other popular sources is online store POS data, meaning if you have, sorry, offline store, meaning if you have if you have a retail business, if you have physical stores, we can also collect data from those stores every time a sales transaction happens. And the sixth source is e-commerce. If you have an e-commerce website, we can collect data online when someone makes a purchase or downloads a particular document, so on and so forth. Now the interesting one is silent consumption because generally on social media, we track data about what are people saying about your brand. Who are these people who like, comment, and share? But our research shows that that audience of for social media is only about 30% of your entire audience. The rest of the audience are what we call silent consumers. People who just browse, who read, but don't necessarily like, comment, or share. That's majority of the audience in the world today. How do you, how can you know that? You know, if you ever use WhatsApp status update or Insta stories or Facebook stories, you will see that there are hundreds of people who would see the story, but only maybe about 15 to 20 percent of them will react to a like, comment, or share. So it's important that you also know who are the people who are just consuming silently. So hopefully you have an idea that with data insights and action, here are six data points that you need to look at. And uh, dear audience and participants, please write questions to Mr. Patrick Mazumdar, who is ready to answer your queries regarding the brand innovations and social media transformations. Please, sir. Yeah, so I see a question from Vanessa Johnson about what is the customer journey from search to purchase. Well, essentially the customer journey is really all about what are the different touch points a customer uses to find information about your business or brand. Uh, what, so typically search, search this is a good starting point because that's where people search about your business, your category, your products and your brands. But that alone is not enough. They would typically like to do some evaluation and comparison. Again, search engine is useful for that. At that juncture, social media channels are quite useful because that's uh, 
uh, where people's friends and families also kind of tend to influence your decisions and thereafter there are other channels that could be useful as well to further influence someone's decision which could be uh, display ads, which could be email marketing content or your website blogs and eventually uh, what leads to purchase whether if it's offline it's an in-store purchase, if it's online it's e-commerce. So the journey, there's no fixed journey, it depends from industry to industry and category to category and uh, uh, but search engines is a critical starting point. I see a question from Salmira about topics and sources of information. Uh, again, depends on your business and industry, Salmira. I'm not sure which industry you're from. But typically, like I said, I think for to influence a customer to want to buy your product or service, I think what's important is you give them a few different types of content. Content that creates awareness, content that uh, helps position your brand differently from the others tells them as to what's different and unique about your business or your brand, gives them some factual information uh, to kind of compare you versus other competitors. So I think those are some important topics and sources of business. The actual specifics will uh, will depend on your category or your, your business area. Carl, I think I just answered that question in terms of topics, categories. Uh, so like I said, it depends on your business and brand, but as long as you have content to create awareness, Evaluation, preference, and lastly, content that can kind of convince people to choose you over your competition. Uh, in terms of formats, it can differ. There are blogs, videos, infographics, PowerPoint presentations, uh, you know, white papers, uh, podcasts, live stream video. The format can differ for different stages. But I think what's critical is for you guys to understand who is your customer. What are the different customer personas and profile? What problem or question do they want answers to? And then create content for them in the right format. And also not to forget, content creation alone doesn't matter. What you need to figure out is how will you distribute the content so that your content reaches the right audience at the right time. So in content marketing, you're looking at both. Start with the audience in mind. Ask what problems they have in mind. Then create content in the format that matters to them and then figure out what's the right distribution channel. Alright, happy to take one more question. Sorry, I need to make a move in the next three minutes. Happy to take one or two questions. Alright, I guess no other questions. Thank you everyone. Thanks moderator. I'll take your leave. Thank you. Thank you very much.